It's Monday, March 11th, 2019, and time for your Barbados Today morning news update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. It has nothing to do with the trade union movement. Senator Caswell Franklin is defending the movement following last week's news of a brewing legal battle between two members of the top leadership of Barbados' largest public sector union, the National Union of Public Workers. General Secretary Rosalind Smith has threatened legal action against union president Akani McDowell over statements he made about her. McDowell has denied the allegations. While Senator Franklin, who has the Unity Workers Union, insists that Smith has a right to defend her name, he tells Barbados today this doesn't affect the wider movement. That is all. You know, I don't see how it would affect the trade union movement. It isn't, it isn't like there were negotiating with an employer and sell them out, you know. This is a person seeking to protect their good name. And everybody has that right. Okay. Like, no, this, this, this will have absolutely no effect on the trade union movement. Some people might want to say that. Some people. Because it makes good um, press, it makes good uh, a lot of um, comments in the news. But when you look at it, nitty gritty, what will, what impact will that have on my membership? What will, what impact will that have on the BW's membership? What will it have on the BUT's membership? None. Is the largest turnout so far? Over 2,000 runners and walkers of all abilities yesterday took part in the third edition of the RBC Race for the Kids at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill. Managing Director of RBC Barbados, Robert De Silva, was pleased with the response and he's hoping to cross the 3,000 mark in the next two years. This event has been growing in strength and success since we first launched the race in Barbados in 2017. Over our first two years, the RBC Race for the Kids has raised just over $183,000 in support of the UWI Cave Hill Campus, first year pair program mentors, and we were able to fund 21 scholarships to date. More males need to step up. That call comes from Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs, Cynthia Ford, as she noted insufficient number of males in the club scout movement, including in the area of leadership. She believes females already outnumber men in the area, as she commended 12 women from across Barbados who were honored during the International Women's Day Triennial Awards on the weekend at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill campus. The minister said more people need to volunteer. Parents and guardians, let your children get involved in volunteering. This Cub Scout movement is dying for leadership and it is dying for persons to volunteer their time. And if you're not careful, women, the women will take over. Madam Cheryl, I'm sure that they have more females now in the Cub Scout movement, the movement than about the males. And we need to reach out to our men. Everybody wants their child to be a part of the scout movement. Everybody wants to be in the 4 H and so on to have their journey, in, but hardly anybody is volunteering. Small business and commerce officials are keeping a close eye on rapidly changing smart technology and its implications for consumers. That assurance from Minister of Small Business Entrepreneurship and Commerce, Dwight Sutherland, as he launched a week of activities to celebrate World Consumer Rights Day. But as he addressed the church service at the Ellerton Wesleyan Church St. George yesterday, the minister told consumers they too must take responsibility for their transactions. According to Consumers International, there are 23.1 billion smart products in the world outnumbering people 3 to 1. Those smart products outnumber us people 3 to 1. With the accelerated evolution of the technological environment, along with the rapid uptake of smart technologies and devices, the challenge that exists for government and their subsidiary agencies to be able to effectively maintain the balance between addressing emerging issues related to the digital economy while at the same time protecting your interests, which is the consumer interest. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. In Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro says the country's complete electrical failure has been caused by an international cyber attack. Power and communication outages continued to hit Venezuela yesterday, intensifying the hardship of a country paralyzed by economic and political crises. We get the details from France 24. A divided country as thousands took to the streets of Caracas. On one side, supporters of opposition leader Juan Guaido, all wearing white t-shirts and hats. On the other, followers of President Nicolas Maduro dressed all in red. The two rival groups blame each other for widespread power cuts that have affected much of Venezuela since Thursday, wreaking havoc in hospitals, businesses and homes. I've been warning about the power crisis for years, and we must continue to do so because soon it will turn into a fuel crisis. We're already facing a water crisis, and look at the state of our hospitals. Police were out in force across the city, with armoured vehicles deployed where the opposition march took place. At the same moment, Nicolas Maduro addressed his supporters, saying the recent blackout was an act of sabotage by the US. He also claimed that a new cyber attack had prevented authorities from restoring power throughout the country. And finally, today has been declared a national day of mourning in Ethiopia after a Nairobi-bound Ethiopian Airlines Boeing flight crashed minutes after takeoff yesterday. All eight crew and 149 passengers on board, including tourists, business travelers, and at least a dozen UN staff members were killed. It's not immediately clear what caused the crash of the Boeing plane, which was new and had been delivered to the airline in November. Once again, we go to France 24. Passengers from at least 35 countries were on board. The airline told a press conference that the pilot had sent out a distress call shortly after taking off. From the uh, air, ATC, uh, air traffic controller's uh, record, uh, the pilot uh, mentioned uh, that he had uh, difficulty and he wants to return. Uh, so he was given clearance. The aircraft was less than three months old, but it's the second fatal crash of the Boeing 737 MAX 8 in just five months. The same model of plane went down in Indonesia in October, killing 189 people. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.